Hey everyone, it's DJ Alex Brown here doing a review today for the Chopper LM120 moving head wash light. This is a 120 watt wash light with an interesting lens on it, it seems. I've never seen anything like this before, so I'm excited to review it for you all today. Let's get right into unboxing and taking a look at this light. All right, here is the light. And the first thing I noticed when taking a look at the box, it comes in a more standard, just cardboard box. There's not like, uh, you know, a branded topper box, which is fine. I just thought it was an observation you might like to know. Uh, as we open this up here, you can see, as always, high quality foam in here. And you can see the front of the light right at the top. You do get two cables with it. This is a PowerCon and then a DMX. And I am happy to see that the quality of this DMX cable looks pretty good. Um, it has nice uh, connectors that, you know, would be soldered on as opposed to just one fixed fused cable. So this is definitely a cable that I would personally use. But when you open up the foam packaging, you do have this clamp on one side of it. Uh, so it looks like this is a single clamp light. Uh, if you see my previous videos, I do prefer when moving heads have two clamps. This is a smaller moving head, so I do understand that it only has uh, one clamp for it. But uh, these are the quick connect style. Yeah, I prefer two clamps, just it's always way more secure. Of course, you also get your manual in here. And wow, this is a super compact light. Very excited to share this with you. Um, one of the first things I'm noticing as a lighting professional here is on the bottom, there is a, a section for the clamp that has this, um, these two holes in it, which I believe is where you would normally feed a uh, safety cable. At least that's what I've done in the past because there's no uh, safety loop on this, which is fairly common nowadays. Usually the safety loops have to be removable because of that. So... Okay, so here's a safety cable of mine. So if you wanted, you could go right through under here, which is pretty nice, and go like this. You can also, hello, hook it through here. This carabiner might be a little too big. No, nope, no problem. So like that, and then you would bring your safety cable back down into the carabiner like that. So now this is a small light, um, but you can definitely feel it has a little bit of weight to it. I wouldn't say it's like strangely heavy or anything like that, um, but there's clearly some components in this base that are, you know, adding a little bit of weight. Of course, you have to have your power components uh, to step the power down into something the light can actually use. And I'm assuming this probably has a switching power supply as basically every light nowadays does, but um, I don't need to go too deep on that. We do have the Bitopper uh, logo on the side with the LM120. I'm quite surprised to see that there is a huge heat sink in this head that I can see through these fins. It's not gonna be possible for you to see in the video, but, and then there's also a fan under here. Again, kind of hard to show you in the video, but uh, I'm surprised they fit all that into such a small size. And then I'm assuming the LEDs are up behind this filter thing here. Now, I'm not sure if this is like a Fresnel lens um, that's for the wash light. So I'm curious to actually turn this on and, and see what it does because I've never really seen a light with a front lens like this. Beyond that, on the front of the light here, you have your standard four button display, uh, pretty simple to use. The buttons to actually use the display of course this is a simpler um, just four character seven segment display as opposed to um, like a full LCD display which on a light like this is probably helpful it probably makes it a lot simpler to use flipping this around to the back you have your fuse as normal no on off switch just something I like to point out um, this light does not have an on-off switch. It's probably way too small to have an on-off switch. I personally don't think that most lights really even need an on-off switch, but I do just like to mention whether it's there or not because some people might find that helpful. Uh, you do have your power con input and output, and then your three pin DMX input and output. So fairly standard on all those things, just what you would expect. And that's everything that comes in the box. So now let's take a look at exactly what this light can actually do. What I think is interesting is in this manual, it calls channel one horizontal motion, which is side to side, right? 
Normally that's called pan um, and vertical motion would be tilt. This moving head does have pan capabilities, of course, so I'm just controlling the pan right now. It does have fine pan, which has gotten more common lately, which is great. It's super helpful if you're working in big rooms. Um, it's one of those nice to have features. So here is the fine pan. You can barely see them moving, and that is exactly how it should move for fine pan, because it's for fine adjustment. For the vertical motion or tilt, let's go all the way to zero. You can see it has a slight downward angle at zero. Um, it's a good downward angle, um, especially for a light of this size, but I would always love to see as far of a downward angle as possible. These might not be the best light to put on top of uh, truss towers or totems. Next up, guess what? We have fine tilt or vertical fine tuning is what they have it listed. Again, you can barely see it moving. I can see it moving in front of me, but that's the maximum adjustment. Again, this is for fine control, so I'm not at all surprised to see that. That's exactly what you would expect. Next, number five, you can adjust the motor speed. I'm probably not gonna adjust this because I never adjust it, but it's a good to know it has kind of thing. Number six in the manual is listed as aiming. The description is that it's linear dimming zero to 100%, so I'm not exactly sure what this means. Probably a master dimmer, but honestly, I'm a little bit confused based on just what the manual says. It's a little unclear. Channel seven is stroboscopic on this manual, um, which is basically, based on looking at the descriptions, it's the shutter for the light. Uh, technically, there is not a physical shutter in this light, so it's really digital. So you can see we'll strobe a little bit here. Wow, that's a bright white strobe, damn. And I'm gonna open it all the way up, which is where usually where full on is. Now, surprisingly enough, the fan has not come on yet. It's pretty common that it does whenever I run a light like this on full blast, so I'm curious what it will take for it to come on. <laughs> Next, we have four color channels. So this seems like it's an RGBW light. Uh, so red, green, blue, and white are first. So here's our red. Seems the white LED is on right now. Next, we're going to go into green, blue. Nice, there we go and now that is fully off. These are bright. Uh, these are 120 watt light. Just the white alone is very, very bright. Like I'm squinting a little looking at this light. If I add another color, it's just super, super bright. It's crazy. Channel 12 is listed as color, all or none. Oh, this is, so it goes on to the second page here. So it's color temperature one to 250 Kelvin, but that's also 8,500 is really a strange end. And then the 2,800 Kelvin looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'd almost like to see that lower, but I'm curious what the CRI on these is. Next are the built-in programs, which you can control over DMX. This is an interesting feature that many lights nowadays have this feature. So I'm just gonna turn the dimmer down because it's so bright, it's hurting my eyes here. Is color macros. And as you scroll through, you're just going to different colors. What I find interesting is that it actually fades through the colors. So as you can see, as I scroll this wheel, it's going from like a, a light blue to like a turquoise to like a teal and then into like a lime green, yellow, orange, off. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the devil's eye. And I had to do a little cut in for this video because I realized I had made a small mistake uh, when I actually put the profile into the WMX, I was actually able to access the LED strips that are around the edge, and that's all that you're seeing right now. So they are quite a bit dimmer than the center LED. If you want to get an idea of just the white center LED, I'll turn that all the way up on white and then put it to minimus shutter. So that's the center white LED, extremely bright. So I'm going to turn that off. So that's just the outer ring. Uh, the outer ring seems to be RGB, and there's a separate dimmer channel for the outer ring, which is right here. Uh, obviously I'm using the WMX. It's the same on any controller. It's just looking at the 
values. This just makes it quite a bit more visual. And then you can also see your shutter for this outer ring separately. So that's that. And then you can control the red, green, and blue. And then there are also these programs which will allow you to control the three different segments by uh, you can't individually control the three separate segments, but you can if you use this, which has a couple different modes, and this is pretty cool. Uh, I would almost suggest just running an auto mode. This effect is definitely more to be seen with the eye staring at the light and not necessarily uh, intended to wash a room. It's more of a visual effect, which is quite cool in my opinion. It's different. Um, so this might be a nice thing for you to work into your light shows. I like to see that the topper is coming out with these fixtures that are a little more unique. Then you can change the speed of this. Just go in and adjust the dimmer downwards on this. I'm not sure that you'll really need to. The dimmer, so it has separate dimmers. You can independently dim that. And the center, and now you can see, hopefully, that there's a little bit of a green edge around it. So definitely a lot of different cool things you can do with this light. And um, it's just creating new possibilities of what you can do with light. And it's definitely a fixed length, uh, fixed zoom light, so you can't zoom in and out on this light. Um, that's something that sometimes is nice to have on wash lights like this. This is a really good looking wash with a somewhat hot center going out to kind of a fade off the edge. Um, if that's what you're looking for, then this is a great light for you. You know, if you're looking for something that's hot in the center and doesn't fade off the edge as much, you're probably looking for like a beam light. Um, and that's just a matter of what kind of light you're actually looking for. So this is a great entry level um, wash light for DJs, um, entry level production people. All right, so let's wrap it up with my final thoughts on these lights. Uh, I think it's a great entry level wash moving headlight, great for the beginner DJ. Um, someone looking to get into moving headlights, really excellent price point on this fixture. The price changes over time based on, you know, what current offers they have going as does everything on, you know, across the internet. But if you buy these direct, if you want to buy these direct from Batopper uh, on their website, I will leave a link in the description below as well as my link tree where you can look at all the lights that I've reviewed on my channel. And uh, all of the links that you'll see will be affiliate links, so they do help to support the channel. You certainly can't beat the value of these lights. Um, as far as the build quality, everything seems great, um, even down to the fan and the heat sink and the head, which it doesn't really even seem warm at all, so I'm not sure when you'd really need to even use the fan, which is a good thing. Um, it's good to see that the lights are overbuilt because that will probably mean that they'll have a longer lifetime. The only one small concern that I've had using the light is when the head moves, it's very hard to hear, but sometimes you can hear like there's a wire moving into the head. I have slight concern that the wire over time might get frayed. Um, that's the only thing that could potentially happen. Otherwise, I think the build quality and quality control is great on these lights. Um, if you're using these for a DJ, uh, you know, less than every single weekend, then I don't expect you'd have any problems with them anyway. If I were to give this light a star rating out of five, for an entry level light, it's a five out of five. So take that as you want to. Um, it's a great light for entry level use, beginner DJs, uh, beginner production houses, potentially a band. Uh, looking for cost-effective light to get them into lighting um, and perhaps upgrade to one of Batopper's higher-end moving headlights, 270 watt that I've reviewed that I'll leave a link to that, you know, is, is a little bit of a step up from this. Um, so this is more your entry-level moving head. And with that, if this is a light you're interested in, like I said, go check it out at the link in the description and give these a try. It's a pretty small cost to get into some lighting. So um, there's very little risk in doing this in my opinion. And Batopper has been great with me. If I've ever had any issues with any of the lights that they've sent me, um, they help and are very patient with me. I'll give you 
uh, to walk through how to do that. Um, so like I said, there will be a DMX video for the WMX and some topper lights coming out soon. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and leave me a comment to let me know if you'll be buying a set of these lights or not. I always recommend buying lights as a set. You can certainly buy one and then buy another later, um, but you probably wanna buy these in a set of two. All that being said, thank you everyone so much for watching the video. I, again, I'm DJ Alex Brown, and until next time, peace.